What's going on guys and welcome back to the homestead. Today we're going to talk about our mangalitsa pigs. Mangalitsa pigs were first developed in the early 19th century when they crossed the local Hungarian pig with a native Siberian boar and they got this long-haired lard pig. In 1833, the Prince of Siberia brought 12 pigs in total. They brought 10 sows and two boars to his friend, the Archduke, to begin the breeding process of this pig. In 1943, this pig was booming. There were over 30,000 pigs in production, and they were just really popular. In 1991, sadly, there were less than 200 of these pigs in production. Luckily, due to some amazing conservation efforts, this pig was able to rebound, and now there are over 7,000 known sows across the world and there are over 20,000 piglets born every single year. In 2007, they came to the United States and now there are multiple people across the nation that sell and breed this pig. All right guys, now for the awesome part, the part that makes these pigs stand out above and beyond other pig breeds is their pork quality. So the Mangalisa pig, its pork is considered the Kobe beef or Wagyu beef of the pork world. And why it's like that is because of its red, rich marbling meat. That meat is succulent, that meat is tasty, that meat is not plain. If you go to the grocery store and you see just a regular pork chop and it doesn't look red and marbled, it's just a regular pork, the other white meat pork, that's low quality. This stuff can retail up to $17 a pound depending on the cut and your market. We don't think we can get that here because we're in the middle of nowhere, but I think there are a lot of people who are in good areas that can make that happen. So that is why this pork is so highly valued. All right, so as far as care goes, we have two categories. We have feed and then we also have infrastructure. I'll start with feed. So we feed them a very simple feed of commodity just added into whatever else we give them. We can give them hay because they will eat hay but they are a very simple feed, uh, feeding pig. You don't need to invest a ton of money like some people do in, let's say, a hog. Um, they do graze, but as you can see, they also can tear up the pasture a little bit. They like forest, so if you have forest on your property, they're perfect, and you can even train them on electric fence. Sometimes. Sometimes. The jury's out. Okay, so this pig needs water access all at all times, and as you can probably see, they also will make a waller for themselves in the summer times to cool themselves down. Mangalitsa pigs are one of the most hardy breeds of pigs in the world. They can survive in temperatures down to negative 50 degrees. They don't really need a shelter, but if you want to just added support, you can get yourself a three-sided shelter like the one we have here. This one was just made of scraps that happened to be at my dad's work. It's holding up pretty good. It has. All right, so as far as fencing goes for this breed of pig, we have a couple options. We have electric fence, but for some people, they seem to struggle really bad. We did at first too, um, but there's also cattle panels, which we actually did in here just for added support. But as you can see, our, uh, our boar that we had was very aggressive and just want it out. Yeah, so we recommend cattle panels. We also recommend that- uh, The more stakes you have- The more stakes, a cattle panel, like three, if you have a 16 foot cattle panel, having four. three per cattle panel, and one one of those, he's right, kind of four, but one, one of them actually is the support between the two different sides. You can see where we've added the red posts in, the, in between just to make it even more secure. The next thing we're gonna talk about is temperament for these pigs. So as far as temperament goes, just like people, they all have very, very different personalities. Ogre's personality was aggressive and um, 
murderous or whatever <laughs> word you want to say for that. He, the very first day I got him, he put me in the emergency room, got stitches, and I had to, um, I, and that was before I even got him in his pen yet. Um, so he is going to be leaving the homestead and going to Bee Ridge's farm where most likely he is going to be turned into dog food. We have spent hours trying to catch him when he's escaped or just getting him in the trailer to leave our farm. I think I spent like over six hours and that was just too much. She went right in and I didn't even want her to go in. <laughs> so very different between each thing. Yeah. Why will he be dog food? Because, oh, so boars, all boars, well, most boars, Mason's a little different. We can talk about that in another video. But this species, at least, has a taint to their meat when they haven't been castrated. So he won't really be edible. Oh, he'll be, he'll be edible, just he won't taste like what this breed is supposed to. All right, so as far as breeding for these pigs, they actually have quite a bad rap, sadly. These pigs, some people will say, oh, like four to six piglets. Um, her first batch of babies was nine, which was pretty good. And then this time she had seven piglets. So they are pretty decent breeders. Our boar, actually, Ogre, he bred to everything on our farm. We have coon coons that are partly his, which he did that through the fence somehow. And then we also have um, some of our Maishans, which was we were pretty upset there. with, that were also half ogre. So he just needed to go because of how good of a breeder he actually was. Um, these pigs actually have a decent amount of time compared to uh, coon coons with how fast they grow, around 12 to 15 months or so until they're ready for butchering. And their size also helps. They can be around 300 to 400 pounds when they're ready to butcher. Okay guys, thanks for watching this video. I hope I was able to educate you so you could learn more about this amazing pig. In a future video, we're going to discuss the quality between Mangalitsa and Maishan. So stick around to see that video. Thanks for watching.